If we're seriously going to try to understand and do something about the mortgage and foreclosure related problems that brought us here today, we need to begin to address the broader context of economic inequality and racial discrimination and segregation directly, as well as specific banking practices and bank regulation practices. That if we only focus on what's going on within financial institutions and within regulatory agencies and not understand the broader context of economic inequality and racial discrimination that got us here, I would argue that we're not going to get very far in addressing these problems. It is obvious, if you look at it, that what's happening in Cleveland, what's happening in Philadelphia, what's happening in Baltimore, and oftentimes in black and Latino neighborhoods, actually has a very strong relationship to what's happening on Wall Street, what's happening in China, what's happening in London. And people are not, are not drawing that connection. And so if you look at discussion around about the bailout or about the crisis, the, uh, the, the credit crisis, there's no mention of race in that. Uh, and if there is a mention, and recently there has been some oblique and not so oblique mention, it's actually done in the way of blame. It's like these people, you know, whenever you hear that phrase, these people, you know what's coming next is bad. We missed 10 years of understanding this problem because we thought it was a black and Latino problem. But because of these interconnections, these problems are our problems. And when I say our, I mean global problems. They're worldwide problems. And so we need to think about these things in relationship. The effect on this nationwide has been just catastrophic. The estimates are arranged are, are extensively. But it is thought that somewhere between $164 billion to $213 billion in equity is being stripped from minority neighborhoods alone because of the foreclosure crisis. And that's only through 2007. I mean, it's, it's, it's escalating now. What we found is that when you control for risk factors like FICO score, like loan to value ratio, um, like income, African Americans and Latinos were still about 30% more likely to receive a higher cost loan than whites of similar quote unquote risk. What we are facing here is not only the loss of homes and people's livelihoods, but an underlying discussion about who is an American and what will America look like. And so what we really ended up doing in some ways through the machinations of the mortgage market, the way we securitize loans and such, was essentially to socialize risk and we privatized gain. It doesn't sound like America. How we got here, I think, has a lot to do with the myths and destructive um, uh, narratives that have formed that we have never sort of properly or sufficiently refuted um, and, that, and have grown exponentially. And there's this underlying assumption that this is a good thing, right? that this is all being done in order to help low and moderate income people and neighborhoods of color who wouldn't have access to credit otherwise. It creates this idea that, um, you know, this mainstreaming of, of, of loan sharking has come to, is, is packaged and is, um, is presented as something that's actually good for us, right? Because if we didn't have this, we wouldn't have anything at all. And so the message is, well, you know, be happy with what you get and that we, we, don't, we cannot afford to dismantle this system of discriminatory lending because this is it's actually working for our, our, our communities. Consumers are nervous. They're not spending. Bankers are consumers. Regulators are consumers. We are all impacted by the environment, by the news, by the fear. The big players have been responsible when they've been forced to be responsible. And this national debate, do you bail out banks or do you bail out homeowners, that's the solution. Even if you think the borrowers have abused the system, no borrowers should be allowed to abuse financial, the financial system to the point of breaking it down. With respect to this, the bailout slash rescue plan, um, I mean, I, you know, I don't want the economy to tank. Nobody does. Uh, but we have right now a chokehold on Wall Street to actually pass some uh, changes in the rules. Maybe before we give out $850 billion or however much that we're giving away, we should consider changing the playing field, the chessboard on which the predatory strategists move their pieces to get us to the situation that we've gotten to. That has not happened. None of the rules that got us to the situation that we're in now have been changed. So I would advocate a very simple uh, strategy to, to, to the bailout plan. Reform before rescue. No more money until they change the rules. 
Let us commit ourselves to work hard to help policymakers understand their need to prioritize working America the same as they currently prioritize wealthy America.